la. What to do to die today at a minute or two till two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today we are doing something a little fun here. We are tasting five non-alcoholic whiskey alternatives. Now, I know a number of you are doing Dry January. I'm not, but I commend you for doing that. Any of you who are, are still going alcohol-free, good job. I think it's important that we all take a little break from the booze from time to time. I'm I'm finally going to taste some non-alcoholic whiskey alternatives. I, I, it's a long, it's a mouthful, it's a lot to say. So I went out to my local liquor store, grabbed all the bottles they had, which happened to be five different brands. We are going to taste them on their own, see what we think about them, and then we're going to mix them up into a simple whiskey sour cocktail, a mocktail. That's gonna be it. I, I'm looking to form an opinion. So without further ado, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go taste five non-alcoholic whiskey alternatives. To the bar. Today's video is sponsored by Cook Unity. Cook Unity delivers signature restaurant quality meals right to your door. They partner with over 70 award winning chefs who believe great food should be for everyone. The meals are always fresh, not frozen, and the menu is constantly changing to offer you hundreds of new options. To get set up, go online, answer a few quick questions about what it is you like pick a plan and you are good to go. Pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. Each week you'll find an assortment of globally inspired meals for all dietary preferences, including vegan, paleo, gluten-free. Me, I like eating stuff and they got that covered. You can choose to pick your own meals ahead of time or simply let Cook Unity choose for you. Sometimes it's nice to not have to make any decisions. Am I right? For tonight's dinner, I had the creamy mushroom cavatelli made by Chef Andres Mendez in New York. It was rich and mushroomy, delicious. Thanks, Chef Mendez. To get started, head to cookunity.com slash Anders or click on the link down below and use code Anders50 to get 50% off your first order. Thank you, Cook Unity. Onto the film. All right, so we've got five examples of whiskey alternatives here. And I decided to go with whiskey because number one, it's cold outside and this is the time of year I like to drink whiskey. But really, I just wanted everything to kind of be like each other, so it was a fair comparison. I don't know how this stuff is made, um, but I'm very curious. I went online to each of these brands and they have FAQ pages and they tell you everything you wanna know about the product. And I was just looking for what's the process? How do you, how do you make this? And a lot of them will say things like, well, we reverse engineered our favorite spirits and we micro filtered and we infused all these crazy botanicals and it didn't really make any sense to me and I felt like they're kind of beating around the bush. Some of them just didn't mention anything about how they were doing it. I, out of these five, the only one that gave me a somewhat clear idea of how they made the product was Spiritless. There they said they use reverse distillation. They uh, start with an overproof spirit and they infuse it with like wood chips or botanicals, whatever the case may be, and then they distill it, which separates all of the alcohol out of the product. And instead of using that alcohol to make their product, they use what's left behind. But at least I had an idea of where these flavors were coming from and how they got the end product. Some of them claim that you can enjoy these neat, which to me is like, why? <laughs> I, I know, I'm sounding close-minded here. I'm trying to be open-minded, I'm just by nature close hearted. Um, and then others say best, you know, used as a substitute in a cocktail, which is how I see these spirits being used. One of the reasons why I haven't gone down this path is because they're not cheap. I spent between $25 and $35 a bottle, which is essentially the same price as a bottle of liquor. But I went in there with a mission, so let's get started. Going down the line, my right, your left, we've got the Ritual Zero Proof Whiskey Alternative out of Chicago, local for me. Then we have the Spiritless Kentucky 74 out of Austin, Texas. The Spirit of Bourbon by Free Spirits out in California. And then we have some international contenders. We've got Clean W Whiskey Alternative from Clean Co out of London. And then the Liars Highland Malt out of Australia. I think a pretty good selection. I have no idea. I'm, I'm hoping that these are a good representation of this category of, of booze. 
Got my water here to keep my palate cleansed. All right, I'm gonna pour them in the same order. I'll start with the ritual. Looking at the bottle, it's got some sediment on the bottom. It doesn't say anything about shaking, but I'm gonna shake it. A few of them say less than 0.5% alcohol by volume. So they can call it non-alcoholic. Think of like vinegar. One thing to note about these is because they're not alcoholic, the shelf life is considerably shorter than a bottle of booze. Most of these say to consume them within 12 weeks, so three months. Some of them say six months. They don't last forever. Couple things I wanna look for. Number one, uh, flavor notes. Think about whiskey and the flavors that you get. So I'm expecting notes of oak or smoke, uh, vanilla, maybe some brown sugar, maybe a little bit of fruitiness, some spice, some grains, maybe corn if they wanna mimic bourbon. Oh, there's a lot of different fun things that you could do with it, maybe black tea. I am curious how they are gonna mimic the burn of alcohol. Texture is another thing that I'm I'm looking at. I'm gonna start with the Ritual Zero Proof Whiskey Alternative. Got little bubbles on it. I'm guessing that's from me shaking it up. Pretty cloudy, kind of viscous. It doesn't really look like whiskey to me. I don't know if that's all that important. So let's go in for a sniff. Okay, we're not gonna get the waft of alcohol, obviously. It's not to be expected. It smells like apple cider vinegar, but I do get a fruitiness, almost an apple-y little spice and maybe like a kind of a creamy vanilla note as well. Cheers. Okay. Uh, doesn't have a real strong flavor, but there is a lingering spice on the sides of my tongue and in the back of my throat. So that's kind of to mimic the burn of alcohol, I'm guessing. Kind of tastes like apple juice with a little bit of black pepper. I don't think this one is meant to be sipped neat. I think this is meant more for cocktails. Uh, here, here, look at warm caramel, stone fruit, black peppercorn, prickly ash, and toasted spices. It does have a little weight to it. It's unlike anything I've ever had before. On to the next. At least now I kind of have a starting point. All right, so here we have the Spiritless 74, Kentucky 74. As you can see, it's a little bit darker. It looks a little bit more like whiskey to me. It's not as cloudy. And uh, on the nose, I guess kind of a, a whiskey scent. It's not, it's not whiskey, but it's closer to it. Maybe like a tea, tea smell. Hmm. That one's all right. I taste that uh, charred wood. Get some vanilla. Uh, and then there is like a little, little spice. It doesn't burn in the back of my throat like the first one did. It's thin. So I do wonder how this would be in a cocktail. Yeah, what I'm left with is, is like a, a charred wood finish, which is nice. That's what one thing I do like in whiskey. So hey, for a whiskey alternative, I can see what they were going for. Onto the third one. This is the uh, Spirit of Bourbon, Free Spirits. This is out of California. American oak and yellow dent corn, if you know your corn. Huh, kind of looks like whiskey. Hmm, it does have a sweeter smell. What is that? Is that yellow dent corn? Oh, interesting. They went with sweet and, and spicy. Like spicier than the first one, definitely spicier than the second one. There's like a creamy component here, like uh, cream soda with like some essential oil or like cayenne or something. This one actually like burns in the back of my throat. And on the bottle it says, uh, a kick of B vitamins. So maybe it's B vitamins that I'm tasting. It's all right. I do like how I can boldly just go in for another big gulp because it's not gonna do anything wrong. On to uh, the one from London, Clean W. This one looks to be the lightest. It's really light. The nose, yeah, I don't know what that is. I guess vanilla, but there's a lot more in there. It's a kind of floral. Okay, this one I do get a little bit of uh, a smokiness. I don't hate it, but it's not bad. It's it's pretty easy to drink, actually. It's a little floral, too. So this last one is from Australia, the Highland Malt. I was kind of excited when I, I saw this one at the store because I thought, well, that's giving me an idea of some specific flavors. Um, I'm hoping for a little peatiness, some smoke. Let's see. On the nose, it's fruity. Kind of like it. Yeah, now I'm taking big gulps. What's well, actually really light, subtly sweet, a little smoky on the end. Maybe it's placebo, but I do kind of sense like a, a peatiness to it. This is quite pleasant, if I'm gonna be honest. The other ones, if I were to sniff them, I would know immediately that it's not whiskey. This one 
is reminiscent of whiskey. Like if you had a little bit of whiskey and your ice melted in the glass and it was sitting there for two hours. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Let's try these in a simple cocktail. We're gonna make a whiskey sour, no egg white. When I looked at how to substitute these, a lot of them say just do a one-to-one -one swap with your whiskey. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do two ounces of each spirit, and then I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon and half an ounce of a rich demerara syrup. I'm gonna shake these up and pour these into chilled coops. I don't know if they're gonna actually fill the coop because these are gonna melt differently than they would if I was using real whiskey. Okay, this is kind of what I was expecting. Okay, so here they are. Because we didn't use real whiskey, there isn't as much dilution. So it's not going to fill the glass as much as it would normally, but in this case, I don't think that's a bad thing because a lot of these drink lighter than I was expecting. So I don't want to overly dilute it. All right, so the first one is the Ritual. This one out of all of them appears to have foamed up the most. Cheers. <laughs> I can smell the, uh, the base spirit, if you will. I don't know, I, I, I keep thinking apple cider vinegar. Oh, weird. Much better mixed into a drink as opposed to sipped neat. It's good, I don't, you're not fooling anybody. You're not gonna say, hey, have this whiskey cocktail, but it, it, it does make the drink more interesting. It, it has a fruity element to it. I don't get a whole lot of like, charred flavors, wood. Onward, we've got the Spiritless Kentucky 74. Mm. Okay, I gotta say I'm tasting them, which I thought that they would kind of all disappear. That doesn't seem to be the case. I am tasting that, that charred oak and, and the vanilla. It does lean more towards whiskey than the previous. The only thing is that it does I feel like it really relies on that, that charred oak flavor. And so I'm getting that more than any sort of grains or, I'm, I don't wanna to be too nitpicky here because uh, maybe that's not the direction they were trying to take this in. Next, uh, the spirit of bourbon. Ah, uh oh, I don't smell anything on the, yeah, here I get, I get the charred wood in this one. This one, I get that weird apple-y thing, uh, but, I don't really get any smell in this one. Okay, I definitely taste it. Corn. I'm tasting sweet corn. It's weird. It's kind of weird. It's like a, a creamy, corny <laughs> lemonade. I don't know if I like it. I, I'm not sure. I, I like it better in the drink than on its own though. So. That was a step in the right direction. Yeah, strange, weird. But let's keep, keep keep going, keep moving forward. Sorry, I'm falling off my stool. Too many cocktails. Clean W. All right, this was the, the really light one, kind of florally on its own. Let's see how it is in the drink. Really, also light on the, the nose, but I do smell it. It's kind of like vanilla. <laughs> I love how I can just take big gulps. Oh. I don't know that that one's for me. Uh, I can taste it, it's just, it's a weird flavor I can't put my finger on. There's a creamy element to it. I definitely taste it. I don't know what that is. I might have you taste this one, Oz. <laughs> you can tell me. All right, last one. <clears throat> Liars, out of Australia, but going for a Scottish flavor, the Highland Malt. Uh-oh. That one had kind of tastes like whiskey. Wow, that's really interesting. On its own, I was I thought it was a little too light, but here at the end, for a fraction of a split second, you could say, "Hey, there's whiskey in there," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, not really." But uh, Oz, would you like to try some of these? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Have you you obviously never no. had any of these? No. Okay. I just smelled it, and it yeah. it totally smells like apple cider vinegar. Right. Yeah, it has like a shrub thing mm. going on. Yeah, this okay. is out smells of better. Texas. I feel like it needs salt or something. There's like a vinegar banana peel. Mm. Uh, no <laughs> comment. Oh, okay, I don't mind it. Oh, nice. Otters wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan, but. There's like a fruit element. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Yeah, right? This one tastes the most like whiskey in a cocktail. Yeah. Like by far. It actually kind of smells like whiskey on its own too. Okay, what's crazy is this, is that it smells kind of like it would be whiskey. And then you go in for a sip and it's kind of like water instead. But then it's like, it's like if water tasted like whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well that's my two cents. <laughs> Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Oz. Okay, all right. Well, that was okay. very helpful, actually. All right, so out of these five, my pick would be the Liars Highland Malt. But, you know, to each their own, I do think that it's pretty cool that, that these sorts of things are available, that these spiritless spirits are out there. Uh, are they worth it? I don't know, They're that's up to you. They're not cheap, these bottles. I've made a lot of mocktails in my day. I think personally, I prefer to make them from scratch using fresh ingredients. But you know, this is a fun way to kind of change it up and try something new. It's not replacing whiskey. With all of that, I hope that you enjoy this. I learned something, I really did. So thank you for watching. Thank you Cook Unity for sponsoring today's film. It's good to be back. I will see you next time. Cheers.